we're going to share with you. Uh, currently answering questions, more like, you know, running around circles and not really answering the questions. But we're keeping our eye on that story. And uh, the more we know, the more you are going to know. This is also the last week where we're going to have a fully functioning third mainland bridge for six months. The work on the bridge starts on Friday. After that, half the bridge will be closed at any given time for the next six months. We're going to be talking to you a lot about Third Milan Bridge and how it's affecting you and your fellow negotiations over the next half year. So I'm looking forward to that conversation. And that's also because Hard Facts is about all of you who listen. All 630,000 of you. As usual, I'll start with the big three. It's actually a big one, really. It's a big three in one today. Three stories about the police and the way the police interacts with citizens. Let's talk about the commissioner of police in Rivers defending the blockade of Joy Nunez's home. Yes, that's going to happen. Then we're going to talk about SARS being accused of torturing a man in their custody to death. Why was he arrested? He was charging his phone in a hotel that they raided. And then let's talk about a couple who say that police abducted them on the highway and tried to make them falsely confess to being armed robbers and cultists. On Checkpoint, we're going to talk about flooding. Some communities here in Lagos have been advised to relocate because of um, impending floods. Chikudi will be talking to them. Uh, on the big hard fact, we're going to talk about widows remarrying. Remember last week I told you that I would like us to have that conversation right here on hard facts. So let's talk about widows remarrying, right? It's a hot button issue in our society. A lot of people don't want their mothers to remarry after they've been widowed. I want to find out why they feel this way. And I want to ask you what you think. That's happening at five. Don't miss it. And tell somebody to tell somebody else to listen at that time as well. Uh, on the Big Heart, on, on, well, that's what's happening on the Big Heart Fact. You're going to get news updates on the hour, every hour. So you need to listen to every single minute of the show today so that you can get a chance to win yourself great, great, great money. 10,000 hour at this time can do a lot for a lot of people. The only way to win is to listen to every part of hard facts, starting with the big three. This is the big three. The big three. On the hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, Lagos, here you are. How rampant are false arrests? That's my very first question. How rampant are false arrests? How rampant are coerced confessions? How rampant are those? And how can we improve interactions between the police and the public? Those are your big three. Let's talk. Our first story is also part of the NDDC saga. I told you last week about how uh, dozens of police officers blockaded Joy Nunia, the former uh, NDDC MD, in her Port Harcourt home, right? I told you about that. And uh, it happened on a day that she was meant to be testifying before the House of Reps about the commission's corruption scandals. Now, as you know, Nyesomwike, the Rivers governor, showed up and took her to the government house. And after that, the police went on the record. The River State Police Commissioner, Joseph Mokang, gave an interview about what happened. Uh, what we're expecting the governor to turn her over now that he's confirmed that the officers were on legitimate duty here. So I don't believe he's not going to stop police from doing their own uh, legal duties. You will surely turn her off for proper investigation. You cannot block this from investigating. He's an officer of the law, too. He's a lawyer. That's what he said about expecting the governor to drop her off. But this is something that he said about uh, the heavy armed men invading her premises. She's not alone in her house. She had, she had a handful of uh, policemen, the SS, and other security apparatus. You have over, over 20 security personnel protecting her in her house. So our men don't have to take any chance. It's not unusual to deploy such number. They were there to, 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 to invite her, which the uh, normal procedures were followed. They introduced themselves to her. 
They explained their mission to her, but she received it and did not cooperate with them. Only for her to call the governor who came into her residence. Had it been she followed them, all this drama couldn't have arisen. If she is under suspicious, investigation will show whether she is culpable or not. But when investigation is being obstructed, how do you come up with a conclusive investigation? So he said quite a number of things. And he also talked to Nigerians about how the police will always protect the interests of Nigerians. To reassure Nigerians that we are always there to protect their interests, protect their lives and properties. We cannot be harassing the citizens who are charged with the responsibility of, of, of protecting. Let them be rest assured that we are always there for them. That's our constitutional responsibility. And we cannot deviate from that. And then, of course... That was being exaggerated. That was being exaggerated. What time did the governor come and evacuate her? If she's saying that they came to her house at 4 30. Well, you remember, of course, last week she said that uh, the police came into her home at 4.30 in the morning, right? And the police commissioner said that was exaggerated. Uh, nobody came into her house at that hour. And then he was asked about... Um, a video of policemen trying to break into her house, you know? And here's what he said. He said something very interesting about that particular thing. I believe that's a photo trick. But it is not so clear. That's a photo trick, he says. I believe that's a photo trick. It's not so clear. So a lot of things happening in that particular story that may sound familiar to you um, if you have ever had issues with the police. Well, the CP of police there in River State was also asked about what exactly transpired in her house. And here's what he said. Yeah, what actually happened? Uh, the AGP monitoring unit came in for Abuja on a legitimate duty to invite the ex-MD to Abuja. But unfortunately, she refused to honor their invitation, but instead called the governor who came and weeks her to government house. And then they now asked him, why uh, was, the, was there no phone call? Why was there no letter? And this is what he said. It wasn't a surprise as such. It depends on the urgency of the matter on ground. There's a serious petition which needs a serious solution. They came peacefully to invite her, but she resisted that invitation. And then that interview ended with him saying, of course, that um, he will, he's expecting, the police is expecting the governor in River State to hand over Joy Dunia. We believe he's going to do the needs. He will, he will hand her over. Okay, so there you have it. Clearly, the police had a lot to say. But I want us to pay attention to a few of the things they said, right? At one point, they showed the CP a video of policemen trying to break down Joy Nunez's door. And what did he say? He said, I believe that's a, a, a film trick, a photo trick. A photo trick. He actually said that. Notice when he called Joy Nunez a criminal, even though the police hasn't brought a charge against her. Remember, inviting somebody for questioning isn't the same as charging them with a crime. The police cannot call you a criminal until you've actually been indicted, until you've actually been tried, you've been convicted. But here we have the police commissioner calling a Nigerian citizen a criminal without a charge. And it's left to the journalist to correct him and say she's not a criminal yet. But the answer I found most interesting was when he was asked why the police sent so many officers to Nunez's home just to give her an, an invitation. And he said it's because they believed that she also had police officers with her and they didn't want to be outnumbered. That's such an interesting thing, right? Because were the police getting ready to fight other police? What's that thing that we say again about a house divided against itself? Now, you've heard bits and pieces of this interview. You've probably seen some of it online before. What are your thoughts? What do you think about what uh, Police Commissioner Joseph Mukan had to say? What do you think about him saying that he believed footage of his officer trying to break Nunez's door was a photo trick? 
What about needing so many officers to tender the invitation because he feared other police will stop them? And what about his calling her a criminal? What do you think about that? What do you think about him calling her a criminal? Without a warrant, without a charge against her. 0700 You can also tweet at us at Nigeria Info FM and share your thoughts via what via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080 959 75805. 080 959 75805. Hello, thanks for calling. Yeah, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Miss Obianefo. Welcome, Obianefo. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm from uh, First Park. Ah, good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's laughable what the police commissioner is saying. Hmm. For my own understanding, somebody in caliber of the lady is not somebody you may say if you invite her to the police station, she will not go. And saying that it's fo photo trick and also that, that the, the lady have a, a team of policemen in her, in her compound, all is laughable. I think um, it's high time I, I support the way you guys are bringing all this thing up and making us to be able to comment on it. The whole situation... Before, I was thinking that Nigeria needs an injection of ideas to get it right. But now what I'm seeing is that they need surgery, heavy surgery, not even a major one. Because what we are going into, even other things, the police commissioner is not saying the truth. That's number one. So that's what the only thing I have to say about this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for calling. We've got Chibweza on the line as well. Hello, Chibweza. Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. How's the weather today? We are fine. Mm. Well done. Too well, much hold up here anyway. Well, uh, welcome. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Sandra, I have to say something here. Yeah. And um, I hope the whole, the whole nation is listening to me because what we have been doing in Nigeria is pretending that we are a nation, pretending that... We are doing the right thing. We are doing the wrong thing, always. Mostly, our law enforcement officers and agents are doing the wrong thing from beginning to the end. Now, if you bring a Sharia law and you introduce it into a national law, or you want to mix two of them into a national law, there is no how you can follow the right thing to be done. He's telling you, he himself, he has condemned somebody he has not investigated, a police officer. And then he's telling us that because Nuni has some police details, he doesn't want them to outnumber them. And let me tell you, go to the north, there is no police there. Nothing happens in the north and you call the police. No person will listen to you. It is down south here they exercise the powers of the police. I, I don't think that's but, accurate to say that there's no police in the north. I mean, yes, we, because I've, I've, Sandra, I've lived there. We, I know we, that. We, we cover yes. a story here about police even killing somebody in the north during the lockdown. It happened in Kaduna. So but who did they kill? Somebody, well, somebody, who, they killed. somebody who was um, showering in his house and heard some commotion, then came out to investigate. Police fired, gun, and the young man was killed. Uh, fine. You from the law enforcement agents, from the people, the natives, the chiefs, the rulers there. You see how they how, how handle that matter. However, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, until Nigeria does the right thing, mm. let them keep on going to a certain section of the, uh, the federation and be piling, bundling people to a recruiting only from a certain section. Yeah, that's not the conversation we're having today. And I find it quite sad, Chibose, that you're you're making this into an ethnic thing. Justice, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to have you on the show. Yes. <clears throat> I actually am a first time caller on your, on your program. I'm glad you called us today. 
Yeah, and I've been actually following up on series of your uh, topics. Mm. And uh, I will say, of course, I hope that uh, the nation is listening. And as to the topics, uh, topics for today, I think um, it is a menace. It is a disjoint. It is, it is an appalling. It is something that has been on a, a very b- bad uh, scenario that happens any time you are on the other side of uh, the divide. The lady is on the other side of the divide, and that is why a, a, a supposedly CP who is a who earns um, salary from taxpayers' money will become a spokesperson for the NDDC. The CP has no right. In fact, he has no jurisdiction, he has no right to even comment on the matter on ground. All he would have done was to use the PRO to clear the air. But of course, when you have, um, when you have some po- po- police officers perhaps that have soiled their names, that have dented their reputation, because they want to gain a particular position, they become agberus. I use the word agberus. <laughs> First of all, it, the lady is, or by her position, has stayed in a, has have been able to do us good. I thought the police should have been protecting her. To have cried out to say, look, this is the crime or corruption that he said. Uh, prevailing in or happening in NDDC. But of course, no, because the minister somehow um, can give money. I would want to tell you that, look, this thing is just uh, playing out just to favor the minister. All right, well, thanks for calling me, Justice. Dumi is on the line, and she's the last call we'll take and move on to the second story. Dumi? Oh, Dumi isn't on the line anymore. Sorry about that, Dumi. Our second story is a woman's cry for justice for her brother who died in police custody. Mercy Obaze has accused SARS in a do state of falsely arresting her brother, torturing him in custody, killing him and dumping his body in a mortuary without notifying his family. If you're watching us on Facebook, you're going to watch her yourself. If you cannot watch on Facebook right now, uh, Nigeria Info 99.3 or YouTube Nigeria Info FM, listen to her yourself. Madam, you did... The, the Parliament of Justice, or the Palace of Justice, human rights as well, they get justice. It doesn't matter what you say, you call us to explain some matter to us. So, what thing really happen? Okay. The matter will make me come to you and say, my brother go charge for me, for Mango, for a one more restaurant. So, in the afternoon, now in this sax, also sax, then they come to the more red that place. Plus, Mango with the workers, with my brother, they carry the burden. As they arrest the rich uh, station, they don't allow her to call any of the people. So we call the look for her. After some days later, it was that on Sunday, now we call here say, the day a month of people where they rate for Megan. And Megan, he bail himself, he bail all the workers, they leave my brother for them. So on Monday morning, now we can't go. As we reach the SAS office, they say we will come back on Tuesday. That on Tuesday, if they come, we will ready for courts. So on Tuesday morning, when we go now, we carry one lawyer, we take over there. We read there now, the lawyer go meet them. We don't know what they tell the lawyer. Now the lawyer said, we will go as after that day, we will, we will come back. In the afternoon, the lawyer come call us say, my brother died. So Wednesday, we reach police station, we don't see the that day. On Thursday, now we come see people where they charge. What thing happen? They say, now ready, they go. Which guy ready? They say, they go read the Mexico. Uh, restaurants, now they carry my brother journal. What do you do? They say, not do anything already, then go. Okay. Now I ask the police, say, if you go ready, you not get right to call the people, say, you not wait the police, you not call the people, say, you not arrest her, he say, not the police for made mistake. Say, me wait, the senior sister, so make I call right statement. 
Now I say, which statement are one right? Now the two one on letter and tell me before he die, they say no. I say, me don't know the statement when I want to write. Later, now I tell them, say, I want to see my brother, brother, body. They say they don't put out for much water. Now he carry me go meet one of uh, guy office. Now he cut it down and say, this is the uh, family of uh, Amiti Osai or Baze when he died. Say, we want to see the body. Now the guy comes, okay, make it take us to much water. Make it call the IPU. Now he can call IPU. Now we can't go much water. Because they say, they deposit the body for. This is uh, Osulale uh, Hospital. That uh, hospital where they near Mission Road, then I will foresee the body. So since then, nothing they happen. Now I make us come. Okay, this ambitio sign will be to you. Now my junior brother. Okay. Okay, thank you. Say so, the police never will try to reach out. They never call Luna for uh, discussion. Not see, not see to today. Okay. Okay. It's right. They happen all the time. That's when police decide that some crimes have happened in a place or some criminals usually hang out there. So they raid the place and they arrest everybody that they find there. No questions asked. So this man, who according to his sister was simply there to charge his phone, was arrested in a raid. And this happens to so many Nigerians almost every day. They get carried in raids, and it doesn't matter whether they committed a crime or not. As they don't enter, they don't enter. Now, the only way out is to bail themselves. This, of course, is similar to what happened with the Ikoku 4 in Port Harcourt. That's a case that we've been talking about. It's also similar to what happened to Colladay Johnson, except that his was not a raid. It was more of a profiling of the people in a location. So clearly, these police raids and mass arrests, they've become very common. And they're also clearly being abused. And we all have to ask why. Why have they become so rampant, even though we all know, as a people, that they're being abused? And that innocent people are routinely arrested in raids, that they are extorted, that they are tortured, that they're even killed in these raids. Why do they continue? Because notice something that Mercy said. The other people who were arrested in the raid were workers in the hotel. So when the owner was paying the police for his release, he paid for them as well. He did not pay for Hamilton because Hamilton was not one of his staff. And because the police had taken their phones, he couldn't call any of his loved ones to say, help, I've been arrested. Have you ever been a victim of that? Have you ever been a victim of a raid? Has anybody close to you being caught up in a raid. What happened? What was the end result? And why do you think these raids keep happening, even though time after time we see that they end with false arrests, with coercion, with torture, with even death? 0700-993-993-993-0700-993-993-993. Send us a WhatsApp message. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. We've got Twitter as well at Nigeria Info FM. Uh, share your thoughts with us. We've got uh, more people who are talking to us on Twitter, and we're going to take those comments as soon as we can. But let's talk to uh, Emmanuel, who is in Akapa. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello. Thanks Good for afternoon. calling. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Emmanuel. Yes, welcome. Um, the topic you're discussing this afternoon is um, quite an interesting one. Um, I would let me let me speak from um, the experiences that I have had because. Mm -hmm. uh, I also know they can make our time to uh, engage in the human rights um, activities. Fantastic. I have been have been a victim of um, this kind of experience. Okay. And uh, it took it took it took it took me about three years of my life to actually sort out what happened. Okay. I didn't. I... Hello. Yes, I can hear you, Manuel. Go ahead. Hello, Manuel. Hello. Emmanuel, I can hear you. It took you two years of your life to sort out your problem? Two years of my life, yes, hmm. to sort out the problem. Okay. I didn't just find myself in the hands of SAS. I was being, I, I was carted away from my workplace to the SAS office 
I was deprived of access <laughs> to my wife for two good days. She didn't know my whereabouts. For five days, I was being hung up upside down with statements asking me to write something I didn't know anything about. I, in fact, it's, it's, it's not just like um, I'm the only one that has experienced this. And after that experience, I came out, I decided that if I can survive this, if I can get through this, that I think as Nigerians, we need to take up and we need to uh, make up our minds and be courageous enough to face these challenges and decide for ourselves that the situation of our, our country, especially as it's got, it, it, it has to do with um, policing, that is a collective responsibility. Today, I have taken up that responsibility. I've joined a group of people, they call them a human rights volunteer call, and the um, they, 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 they alarming rates at which our youths have been killed. Some of them are battered, some of them are, in fact, they have been, um, how do I, they are maimed. By the time you're bringing them out of their, their detention, it's horrible, and it's not something that is worth talking about. So it's time people come out. It's time we all speak out and say enough is enough. Enough is enough, Emmanuel says. Leke, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, 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 hi, Tandra. Hi. Uh, uh, this is again. Welcome, Lekon. Uh, okay. Uh, I just need to understand from Nigeria. I'm physically challenged. I just do it. Alekon, just send us an email, okay, so that we don't derail the conversation. Because if we let everybody who has a, a financial need uh, calling to Nigeria Info to ask for assistance live on air, the whole of Lagos will start calling into Lagos, uh, Nigeria Info to ask for assistance live on air. So send us an email, please, all right? Send it to info at nigeriainfo.fm, okay? Thank you. We've got messages on WhatsApp. President Sandra, I have a friend who was arrested while coming back from work. He was with his work ID, which he showed to the police, and he was told by the officers that they will break it if he displays it again. Finally, we, ba they, we bailed him with 15,000 naira. Alexander from Aja. My goodness. My goodness. Another person says, Nigerian police is a stooge to the government of the day because whoever pays the piper dictates the tune. It's a common attribute of, underdevelop of underdeveloping countries. All right, Benga. Thanks for your message. Sylvester from Ekotun says, Nigeria has become a stage where many of our leaders are acting drama and we the citizens are watching without paying any amount. Man, Namumu. Okay, what are you talking about there? Thanks for sending your message, though. Sharon says, That River State Police Commissioner is a real representative of, of the Nigerian police. They don't disappoint us with their tactless lies. Please, Police CP, I as a person, I am disappointed with him and the Nigerian police. A CP of the Nigerian police can't define arrest and invitation. How many police personnel do Nigerian police send for inviting a person. Honestly, how long should we keep hearing this injustice in Nigeria? God, please protect us from Nigeria's demonic leaders, Anthony Okafo says. Uh, that CP is a comedian, uh, Makandi from Ogun State says, for calling somebody that has not been tried a criminal. It shows that, that the man is not thinking right. The plan to take away that woman was just to waste her. Arrest, arresting somebody of that status without a search warrant is an impetus given to them by their father who did the posting. One word, Nigeria as a country. Now, wow. Okay. Sandra, I was in Enugu. SARS arrested me for a civil matter, land dispute. When two of our company lawyers came to serve them with court papers for illegal detention, they told me that if I don't sign undertaking not to take them to court, they will charge me for possessing arms. I signed the undertaking that I don't want to go to court. To court. Sandra, I hate SARS. I hate SARS. I hate SARS. Victor from Ijegun says. All right, let's take one call. On air zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. Hello. 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 Yeah, hello. Yes. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Abella from Ekorodu. Have you ever been a victim of a raid, of a police raid? Yes. Okay. Tell me your experience. Uh, the issue of uh, police arresting police, this police, this is very, 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 very wrong. Because uh, some 
years ago when my junior brother, they were just in, inside their compound, I, although the compound is near to the, to the roadside. In the evening, they were just outside playing, and the other one is just uh, uh, inside already sleeping around that kind of 738. When the policemen, they were, they were passing with a vehicle, and they went and stopped in the front of, just after the front of the, uh, of the building. Then they came down, come back to the house, and they saw these guys, they were just outside playing, they, they, play they raided all of them in front of the house. So the junior one was inside, when he ran outside and said, ah, what happened, what happened? They just take gun, beat him and push him inside the, the vehicle at the same time. And they take them down to Ipagodo police station. I will call this uh, the police station for you. Yes, please. This Ipagodo police station. Mm. They went there. After then, they just keep quiet. Nobody uh, uh, informed any of their relatives until three days. Before my number, I called me that. I was looking for him. He called me that he's in a back of the police station. I said, what happened? He said he didn't even do anything. He was outside playing with his, uh, with his friends and uh, junior ones outside. I said, ah, but when you're outside, wow, how, how many did they, did they took you down to that place? I was looking for you for all the, the three days now. He said, since that three days, they were in that Ibagodo police station. And they don't allow anybody to come and uh, 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 inform their relatives. So I uh, went there. My junior, my junior sister, one of my junior sisters, she was nearby. She's one that even see them. Then informed me. So when I went to the Ibagodo police station, they said, ah, Oga, who are you? I said, I am a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian. Hmm. Why asking who are you? Hmm. I, I I came for this my my junior my junior brothers. Hmm. They they are not criminals. I say ah, don't talk, don't say that. How do you know that they are not criminals? Hmm. Do are you staying with them, or did you do what? Did you uh, know what they did before we, we we took them off? I said they did not do anything. This my junior brothers. I trust them. They are not even going out. They are not going, even uh, going, going to work. They are at home doing their, 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 their carpentry work outside their, the, the domain of their, their houses. Mm. Before the man said, no, ah, they, 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 were, they, they, they were in a, uh, in a place where they, uh, everybody was gathering. They, they were doing unnecessary things. That's why we pack all of that. I said, this oh, guy is a liar. I said, no, now, I want, you, you want to teach me my own job? That's where the, the problem started. Mm. I, I just talked. I said, ah. If this one is not a matter of teaching you your, your own job. I am talking about why arresting, what kind of comic, uh, offense they commit before you arrest them. I asked, when I asked that question, the DPO came out. This thing is not a matter of uh, ordinary worker. Even the DPO is them, hmm. they know. Hmm. The DPOs know. Hmm. When they went out, the, the DPOs have to sign that they should come and deliver for them before they uh, get. Hello, sir? Are you there? Oh, no. Oh, no. Amos is in Ikoi. Hello, Amos. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Have you ever been a victim of a police raid? Or you know someone who's been a victim of a police raid? Yes, I have been in Lagos here. Yeah. Hmm. Tell me your story. Uh, at Jack Conde, I was 2018, when one of my clans called me to supply flour for her. Okay. On my way going to Jaconde, I supplied my, the flower. On my way coming outside to board a, a bus from Jaconde to follow me. And also down for with a non gunmen. Hmm. Yeah, hold me. And move move from one place to the other. And now take me to one incompleted building along Bagada. Huh. That's a Charlie Boy area. I did not say anything, unknown to them that I have one small phone. Once I press a button, it will be recorded everything. Hmm. So I hide that phone on my private part. Hmm. In my presence, two guys were shot dead. Oh my God. I did not say anything. 
when they asked me what I was like, I was deaf. I have nothing to say. They tried, 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 tried everything. They did not get anything from me. But hello, Amos. Amos, hello. Oh no, what what's going on with that? Oh my God. Oh, because I wanted to find out if Amos had to pretend that he was a deaf person. Um, I wanted to hear how that story ended, what he did with the recording. Amos, if you can call me back, I'll appreciate it. The last call I'm taking is from Arinze. Arinze, hello. Hi, Sandra. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Have you ever been a victim of a police raid? Yeah, so many years ago. Um, what well, is a long story, but my experience that night... Um, Okay, then I was serving someone in Onisha, and uh, my uncle then had a, has a sister who was going for preparing for her exam. Then he used to go and escort her, me and my junior used to go and escort her every night. So one of those nights we were coming back, police officers took me and my junior one and asked the, the lady to go home alone to go and tell our uncle that uh, they arrested us. So that night, over 100 of us were arrested that night. Some of them were traveling to Lagos. They bought their ticket. They just wanted to go and eat the noodles. And they got arrested. A man was arrested with his uh, about a year and six months old boy, son, that went to uh, a chemist to buy drugs for. You know? Mm. And all of us were arrested that night. But Sandra, mm -hmm. I want to comment on uh, the issue of the uh, the woman, the police uh, commissioner, please. Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. So, Sandra, you know you raise a lot of questions, and uh, the questions you raise are not complete. Okay. I was expecting you to ask, since um, those police that went to invite the woman uh, uh, came from Abuja, mm. and that woman was meant to travel to Abuja that the same day, mm -hmm. To go and testify before the House of Rep. Mm -hmm. Why did they just wait for her to come to Abuja after the uh, the testimony and the take her? Why did they have to travel from Abuja to Port Harcourt when the woman was meant to be in Abuja that the same anyway, day? Anyway, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it shows that. And look, uh, Sandra. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why you are surprised that the police CP is calling the woman a criminal. That's how they see every one of us. Police, an average policeman sees every citizen as a criminal. One told me once at the same time that, look, you, you are driving a, you came out from a AC house, uh, uh, you slept in, in a house that has AC last night. You are in the AC car this morning. Mm. Me, I've been here since last night. Mm. You are not telling me about uh, your, your right. What right do you have? You don't have any right. What is this right for men for? Mm. You know? Mm. So, for this, every, an average policeman sees everybody, you know, as a criminal, except you belong to one uniform organization or not. If not, you're a criminal. Or you have enough money. If you don't have enough money, you're a criminal. Bye-bye, Jerry. Bye-bye, Arinze. Thank you for calling me. You know, it brings me to our third story. It's about a couple who say the police abducted them on the highway. I say abducted because arresting somebody who has not committed a crime is not an arrest. Here's what that woman tweeted. Last week, Monday, my husband and I were traveling to the east from Lagos. As we were making our way down our Benin route, just a little over 9 a.m. in the morning... This group of notorious SARS operatives accosted us, searched our car, demanded that we unlock our phones, which we did just to avoid any argument. While going through my husband's WhatsApp messages, they zeroed in on where he was discussing a genuine business proposal with a friend. That was the beginning of our nightmare. They placed him under arrest on trumped-up charges of cultism, kidnapping, fraud and armed robbery, just like that. They accused me of accessory after the fact, confiscated our phones, turned down our numerous requests to at least speak to our family. Mind you, this was actually happening in the middle of nowhere. They demanded 200,000 naira from us if they are to let us continue with our journey. Of course, we vehemently refused, insisting on our innocence. 
It was at this stage that they decided to up the ante by threatening to take us where we will be dealt with, according to one of them. After several unsuccessful calls to what I presume to be some of their accomplices who were going to play the role of interrogators, they finally settled for IGP IRT office in Benin City. Told us one last time it would be better if we settled them rather than going to the dreaded station. We insisted once again that we were innocent of all the charges and besides, we can't even afford to give them that amount of money. All hell broke loose when we got to the station. Four of the IGP IRT officers pounced on my husband, trying to force him to admit to a crime he did not commit. Three of them came into the room with cutlass, threatened to cut him to pieces because he stood up for himself. They took him to an uncompleted building behind the station and they tried to intimidate, to force him to make a video confession. One of the interrogators told him bareface that they will destroy his career. They confiscated his passport, his foreign ID, and told him he'll never return back to his job overseas again as they're going to place his name on Interpol wanted list. They'll call his employer, they'll make them aware of his trumped up charges in Nigeria. I was subjected to verbal abuse and intimidation. They tried to force me to pen a statement admitting that my husband is guilty of all he was being accused of. After about 10 hours in detention and all that back and forth with them, the lead interrogator then said, the only way you guys are leaving here today is if you are willing to give us 5 million naira. It was at this stage that my husband asked if I was under arrest and the officer said no. My husband then demanded to have my phone returned to me and for whatever reason, the officer reluctantly agreed. That proved to be our saving grace and I was able to get in touch with Segalink. He immediately swung into action and had us released in less than one hour without paying a dime. So that's their story about their 10-hour deal. And I want to know your thoughts. Traveling on our highways <laughs> is already a nightmare because of the fear of armed robbers, of bandits, of kidnappers. And so when you see a police checkpoint, you're supposed to feel relief. You're supposed to feel safe. But here you have this couple in the middle of nowhere, allegedly getting harassed, falsely accused, abducted, extorted, and threatened by police. And this is not an isolated incident. You've had several callers calling to the show today. We've heard several stories like this from citizens and uh, about the police. And again, my question is, how rampant is this? Why has the police command not been able to stamp it out? You have police holding people for days without letting them call family. Think about the distress that this causes. Think about your brother going missing for days and you have no clue whether they are dead or alive. Meanwhile, they're being held by police, by people paid by you to keep the peace. Ah. 0700-993-993-993. Have you heard of people being told to bring money or they'll be charged with a crime that they didn't commit? Why are these things going unchecked by the police command? What needs to happen? How do we improve relations between police and the public? Ezinu Zodima on Twitter says, as far as I'm concerned, that CP should be investigated, investigated concerning the issue of who warranted the arrest. The question is, who gave them the warrant to arrest or invite her? They should start from there. Mohammed Gaddafi says, this is, this is sad. I listened to the woman and I hope she gets justice. As for Joy Nunye, please, Mwike should not release how if he will let them, if he will, let him accompany her. I just hope they won't change the movie for us. Justice Polite also on Twitter says, hmm, is police truly our friend? I think the NPF needs reorientation. Actually, that's a message from Samuel uh, OG Create. We've got Amos back on the line, I think. Amos, hello. Yes, Sandra. Thank you for calling back. I think it was the network. Yes, I think so too. So, when one of their officers hmm. Homicide. Now order the juniors ones. You know, police have one system of uh, holding a, I mean, let me just say a criminal, someone that they are already 
make sure all the really take him as a criminal. They hold me on my belt and the phone fell down. Then carry the phone. They go through the file and they play the record. And I was placed in one alt one black altar, something like that. That I will be killed. Hmm. I see one police among them. I speak outside with him. He was saying, he, he cannot hear outside. I say, okay, if he cannot hear, if I am killed today, I will come back for you. He go back and cover his face and come back. They, they order me to lie down, cover my face. Later, they rest me up. They tie my face. I was unable to see. Sandra, right now, mm. if I can show you my back, I still have the mark of the cane that they were giving me then. Oh, I'm so sorry. I go on several injuries. I was beaten. I shit, I shit on my body <laughs> when I come back. I was they just dropped me somewhere along Oshodi. So, so, so to be clear, they took you to an uncompleted building. You pretended that, that I you, cannot even recognize the place you, right now. You, you pretended that you were deaf. I no. They took me. They, they know I was unconscious. They took three of us. One area in Oshodi. There's one good Samaritan man that come out and asked us question. My phone. And the money that I was with me, more than 30,000 lira, mm. even my shoe they took was it. not with me. They, they, they took everything. All and they took they, everything, they, I mean everything. And they flogged you until you shot yourself. They flogged me. If you see my body right now, I still have the mask. I'm so sorry. It broke, it, it broke me. Then I now meet the man, I talked to him. He voluntarily bring me here to Ikoi. When I get to Ikoi, I call my madam. What did you do with the audio that you recorded? They took the phone. The one you hid in your private part? Yes. Ah. They took the phone. And the other phone that uh, they seized from my hand. So now I haven't seen the phone. I now go and retrieve my land. What happened to the, two, my what happened to the two people that they killed? Did they just leave yeah, them it, there? Immediately, I was left. They took me to uh, also the one area, and then one man, one, a good Samaritan man, and broke, broke us to Falomo here. I called my madam, and she picked me, and she took me to Falomo Hospital, this police hospital. Mm. I was treated. I, I was so, treated. I'm so sorry. And I'm okay. So, you know, right now, mm. there's, there's a particular caller that told you, if you go to the northern part of Nigeria, there's nothing like police. Mm. We have police, Sandra. But let me, I'm sorry to say this, maybe some other people will disagree with me. Mm -hmm. But the illiteracy that is in us, we the North mm. that we are getting access to the police, I mean, the, all the armed forces mm -hmm. through a religious mean, mm. mean ethnic and Godfatherism and so on. We don't know what is policing. Oh, you are a northerner yourself. I'm a northerner. I'm from Kaduna. And you're, I can speak uh, and you're saying that uh, because of the high illiteracy in the north, um, it's affecting the quality of police that we're getting? Yes. But we don't I really mean, have northerners in the police. We have other tribes in the police as well. Yes, Sandra, you can believe me, you, mm. that if you want to count Nigerian police that they are here in Lagos, mm. 99% are northern. Hmm. Why are they not in north? Because they know that the region is undeveloped. Sandra. Hmm. God bless you. Bless you as well. Thank you for calling me. I wonder if Andrew is still there. Uh, Andrew Nadja, hello? Of course not. Andrew, thank you for calling me. That's the final call I'll take because I want to go to social media and read your comments. Justice Polite says, it's very unfortunate that we have many criminals 
Oh, okay. All right, then. We'll have more comments here. Mm, Daniel Smart says, I heard that. That's real cruelty. Uh, Greater Hizo Gear says, Police is your friend only when you have a very big pocket size. NPF needs total overhaul and reorientation. Uh, somebody says, this is how the CP and Akbabio should be thrown away and sent us a meme of the CP and Akbabio being thrown away. Grace Oladejo says, I'm even more scared now with the explanation of the CP. I don't know if it's just my ears, but what I could deduce from his explanation was unnecessary intentional intimidation and lack of respect for average citizens. I am sorry and I hope that I am wrong. Okay. Nigeria Info FM, that's uh, YouTube. And Nigeria Info 99.3, that's our page on Facebook. Now, uh, if you left us your thoughts on Facebook, I'm coming to read it right now on the show. We've also got WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Imanol Chikeze says, uh, The issue of Nigerian police is another national pandemic that government has refused to address. These men in blue and black need a total reform to get rid of all the touts in uniform among them. I'm tired of talking about police in Nigeria. Our problem is lack of strong institutions. The police commissioner has uh, exposed how uninformed and incapable he is if he doesn't know that he cannot call a suspect a criminal until a competent court says so. Ajibi K. Muidin says, I think the commissioner of police was high during the conference. Hmm. Okay. We've got Ali, who is in uh, Ikoyi, and that's the last call I'll take. Hello, Ali. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, like I said, my name is Ali. I'm calling you from uh, Ikoi. Yes, welcome. Yeah. Uh, Sandra, let us... These uh, abnormalities in uh, uh, this police commission. Mm -hmm. I have read that before. That doesn't mean that we don't have good Nigerian police. We have them. Mm. But it's just that the percentage of these things are getting higher. And I want to tell you something, because I spoke with one of my friends mm. uh, overseas, who is an American police. You see, the difference here is that is that Nigeria recruit anyhow from anywhere. Now, in 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 advanced countries, we have psychologists, we have a criminologist, and the rest. You must have a vocation or you must have a profession before you are recruited into this uh, commission, so that the best will come out of you when you are discharging your duty. Or well, here, uh, uh, you know, they pick anybody from the street and then the person is using uh, somebody else's uh, 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 certificate and then nobody goes to do background check on these people before they are recruited into the police. Mm. And you can't have it perfect. You can't have a, 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 a job done from such persons who doesn't know because he gives what he has. Mm. Now, in the, in the country today, in the country today, mm -hmm. Uh, 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 somebody, a criminal or whatever, remains innocent until he's found guilty. That's right. In overseas, you are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. So if you want to get this thing done, if you really want to sanitize that uh, commission or you want to a uh, proper... We should go back to the basics. It's, in the it's, in, it's inaccurate to say that in overseas, you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. That's not true. Oh, really? That's not true at all, in any way. Where do you think... No, you, where, I, no, 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 I said in Nigeria. Maybe you, oh, you okay. think of it correctly. No, you, you said... Ni you, okay, I guess you misspoke. <laughs> because you meant to say uh, in yeah. Nigeria, you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. And then abroad, yes. you're innocent until you prove yourself guilty. Yes, am uh, I right? Okay, yes, yes, you're right. Well, you're not right. Yes. On paper, Nigerian police says you're, you're innocent until, you know, you're proven guilty. But maybe the... Yeah. The uh, the real life scenarios are not the same as what they say with their mouth. Uh, but you will agree with me that the different now Nigerian police doesn't even have any evidence before they charge you to court. Mm. The the only thing that they have because they don't have a forensic uh, capturing, they, we don't have cameras on the street that monitors this. We we also have quackery in the system. Now the you, the only thing that they could take to court after reading is a confessional statement. Because there is no nothing that is monitoring the activities of the police, and then they start mishandling the person to to out of duress confess some things that uh, he he really didn't do. No, he really didn't do. It's quite the thing, Ali. You know that? 
It's quite the thing. Thanks for calling. I, I appreciate you calling us today. I do hope you call us again, but we're out of time. I need to switch gear, hand you over to uh, Chukwudi for, com for conversations on Checkpoint. Don't forget that at 5 o'clock today, you're going to tell me if you will not mind if your widowed mother wanted to start dating again or wants to remarry. Very social condition, um, social conversation we're going to have at 5 p.m. Would you want your widowed mother to remarry? I'm specifying mother because with men, it's typically not a problem. But with women, it's quite the conversation. Huh? So let's have that conversation on the other side of 5 o'clock. But right now, checkpoint. It's